Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Now it's time for really nerdy stuff. So yeah, this came about because I actually heard reporters saying to me after Docker became really, you know, um, it, you know, all the hype cycle came up, people were saying, oh, we don't need the operating system anymore. And I've heard this time and time again. And as a former uh, technology journalist, I can tell you that this is part of the normal hype cycle. And this is my attempt to say, whoa, hold on, ladies and gentlemen, that's not quite all uh, the story. So here we go, a brief history of operating systems. In the beginning, hydrogen, helium, stars, dead stars, more stars, heavier elements, silicon, iron, copper, you know the drill. They all come together, some carbon gets together, it comes up, that seemed like a good idea. Life, you know, whatever. And then they got together, let's take all those rocks, put them together, and make tools out of them. And one of those tools is the computer. Okay, but then they said, hey, we need to write some abstract math to sort of talk to these little pieces of silicon and, and metal to actually make them do something. And those would be the operating systems. And we have so many operating systems right now, it's not even funny. We have this, this has an operating system, that camera has an operating system, that has an op that whatever that is on the wall, that has an operating <laughs> system. The projector has an operating system. It's all operating systems. They're everywhere. We live in a very operating centric, operating system centric world. Now we've improved on this a little bit. We've said to ourselves, okay, it used to be, you know, if you have a piece of metal, you're gonna have an operating system on it. Unless it's a Windows machine and we're not gonna call it an OS because well, no. That's yeah, ladies and gentlemen, cheap shot number one. So but virtualization helped this. We abstracted the operating system away from the metal. We could say, okay, instead of one OS per piece of hardware, we could actually have multiple OSs running, and that's what virtualization helped us do. But we still have the same problems. No matter where you go with these operating systems, you're still having to deal with the inherent problems that an operating system has, especially if you're a developer or a sysadmin. These are still issues that have to be contended with. We still live in an OS-centric world. You know, we do well on some things on the planet Earth. We currently hold all the Mr. and Ms. Universe titles <laughs> in the entire universe, I'm just saying, so we're doing really well there, but it's still been an operating system centric world and we're sort of now moving away from that. And as soon as we did, people were like, oh, maybe operating systems are dead. Let's see. There are good reasons why operating systems sort of drive people crazy. We say, you know, developers, if you're a developer, you're writing your app, you're putting it on an operating system. Oh, the joys of finding out that the latest security patch to that operating system just broke your app, you know, that you've worked so diligently to do. These are real, you know, this happens all the time. Admins have the same issues. They have to deal with the developers complaining about those security patches. Plus they have to get those security patches out because, you know, 500 people from some country across the planet are trying to get into that computer as we speak. Okay, and they have to deal with the inherent flaws. DevOps really doesn't do anything better. I mean, it makes the, the, the time to, you know, app development to deployment better, but still the underlying issue with dealing with operating systems is still a factor here. You can streamline the process. You can streamline it with DevOps deployments. You can streamline it with virtualization and cloud, but these are still going to have the same problems the virtualization in cloud, they're the first steps. You can make things better. You can treat, instead of treating operating systems like pets, you can treat them like cattle. Or if you're a vegan, instead of treating them like heirloom tomatoes, you can treat them like a field of wheat. Okay, I just wanna make sure we get that all in there. Okay, but now, now, and I mentioned this earlier, we have containers. Now, containers are not new, 
They've been around for a while. BSD calls them jails. Solaris calls them zones. Linux, um, they're built into the kernel. They're called um, Linux containers, LXC. But now they're getting a lot more hype because of things like Docker. Containers, which are, if you're not familiar, they are basically file system and namespace containers of, of libraries and applications that run just what you need to run the application. They are very app-centric. If you write an app, put it inside a container, give it only what it needs to run, you can take that app, especially with Docker, pick it up, move it, and drop it on another Docker machine. Done. You don't care what the operating system is doing underneath. As long as it's running Docker, you're fine because Docker will take care of everything else. That layer helps you make an app-centric world. So for that reason, containers are pretty much awesome, <laughs> but not all the way. Containers are new. I mean, the old container technology is um, relatively mature, but the way we're using them now, we're trying to do things with containers that haven't been done before. So the technology is sort of growing and stretching. We see growing pains. Containers are leaky. We have container sprawl where people just say, I'm going to containerize everything and woohoo. And now you've got a million containers and nowhere to put them. So there are still some inherent issues there. So I've done a pretty good job now slamming operating systems. And I have a fairly decent job talking up containers. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, why does anybody care about operating systems anymore? Now this guy, he may care about operating system a little too much. It's OK to love your operating system. Um, say. OK, but seriously, why do we care? Why do we need to have operating systems? Is this model really antiquated? Are we really moving to something else? And I would say to you, no, we're not. And you'll probably be suspicious because it's like, hmm, he works for Red Hat, and Overt is a virtual machine manager that deals with virtual machines that still depend on operating systems. Why should I listen to this guy? Well, because all of the developments that I told you about still were built on top of operating systems, so containers and virtual machine managers, and hypervisors, and all the other innovations that we've seen since the dawn of the computing age, since we figured out how to get a bunch of rocks and metal and silicon together and actually organize them to do really kind of cool things for us, like Twitter, that's cool. OK, that's all coming from operating systems. This is the model that we've started with, and for now, this is the model that I believe that we will continue to progress with and innovate on. To give you an example of what, why I feel this way, look at micromanufacturing or 3D printing. Oh my goodness, I've lost. OK, 3D printing. <laughs> I've totally lost this game. 3D printing, it's really cool. You can custom make anything you want. But it's not going to be the same. You can't 3D print cars. Yeah. Yeah, I suck. Every journey, yeah, that's OK. I'm, I'm going to beat on myself. So every journey that we make with operating system, everything you do with an application, whether short or long, this is the Indian Mars um, Explorer that was recently got to Mars from India. You know, big achievement for that company. It all started from a small place like this um, small vocational high school in India. These are all, this, we all start from the same place, the same deep background. IT has to be innovated somewhere, and it's going to be on the operating system moving forward. They are the foundation, like it or not. Don't believe all the hype. Containers are great tools but they're not going to be the be all end all for now. You're still going to need to work on operating systems and still innovate. So with that and my overly long lightning talk, which is now a complete thunderstorm, don't be a hater. Thank you.